Hi, guys, in this video, we will talk about Iowa Michigan State basketball. Recap Analysis from Hawkeye's Heartbreaking Loss. Russell Westbrook on Thunder. I believe in these guys more than anything in the world. Can go for a slowdown Nebraska's high-scoring guard James Palmer Jr. <laughs> Iowa Michigan State Basketball. Recap. Analysis from Hawkeye's Heartbreaking Loss. Iowa City. Iowa, Iowa raced an early deficit, rallied to take an 8-point lead midway through the second half but couldn't hang on in a 96-93 loss to Michigan State on Tuesday at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Michigan State 23-3, 11-2 Big Ten is ranked 4th in both national polls. Iowa 12-14, 3-10 has lost two straight games. Why? Iowa's offense executed at a high level, especially in the second half. There was a stretch when the Hawkeyes scored on 18 of 21 possessions. But over the last three minutes, Iowa struggled to get good shots and scored just twice. The Hawkeyes were outscored 11-4 during that time frame. What it means. Iowa now has its first losing record in Big Ten play since 2012. It was a gallant effort by the Hawkeyes against a terrific basketball team. Even when Iowa got behind 10-2, the Hawkeyes didn't panic. When Iowa needed stops, it got them. Although the total number of points was high, Iowa's defensive stops were crucial for most of the game. Who starred? Iowa forward Tyler Cook was a mismatch nightmare, scoring almost at will against Michigan State inside with 26 points. Despite feeling sick and barely able to play, Iowa guard Jordan Bohannon scored 17 points, dished 6 assists and had no turnovers. Who stumbled? Iowa from the free throw line. That was the difference in this game, the Hawkeyes were 12 of 19 while the Spartans were 24 of 29. Who's next? Iowa plays at no. 14 Ohio State at 5 p.m. CT Saturday. Iowa Michigan State game updates 10:03 p.m. 2h 42.5 awfully big possession here smart to buy Iowa Spartans lead 92 to 91 with 42.5 seconds left and 11 on the shot clock 9:45 p.m. 2H-650, Meisha Daly has become a star for Iowa tonight, drilling three three-pointers to help Iowa with an 81-76 lead. Michigan State coach Tom Izzo delivered a chief comment at Daly's expense during a halftime interview. 9.41 p.m. 2H-845, Iowa keeps attacking Michigan State and has built a 78-71 lead. Iowa's offense is off the charts this half. Best half I've seen by a McCaffrey team against a real opponent. Scored on 18 of 21 possessions. 9.33 p.m. 2H-11-17, the Hawkeyes remain in the lead at 68-66. Iowa has put together a tenacious effort at both ends of the floor and it's been obvious. Clearly at its best effort of the season. 9.29 p.m. 2H-12-17, Iowa has scored on 13 of 15 possessions this half and reversed a 6-point halftime deficit into a 4-point lead on no. 4 Spartans. Tyler Cook has been a machine, scoring 9 points in the last 3 minutes. Jordan Bohannon's 3-pointer puts Iowa up 68-64. 9.19 p.m. 2H-1549, Iowa continues to battle no. 4 Michigan State trailing just 58-55. At one point the Hawkeyes scored on 6 straight possessions and has attacked Michigan State's defenders. MSU already has 6 fouls this half. 9 p.m. 
Halftime, Michigan State leads 48-42. After a rough first couple of minutes, Iowa settled down and competed with the no. 4 Spartans. Michigan State outscored Iowa 10-2 to start the game after scoring on its first five possessions. The Spartans have outscored the Hawkeyes 12-2 at the free-throw line, which makes up for more of the difference. Combo guard Miles Bridges has 15 for the Spartans, while Tyler Cook has 11 for Iowa. 8.40 p.m. 1H339, Jordan Bohannon picked up a second foul, which sent him to the bench. Iowa has still fought the Spartans but trail 41-33 with the ball. Michigan State has consistently scored in the paint, which is a problem. The Spartans averaged 64% shooting. 8.30 p.m. 1H748 Iowa has consistently battled the Spartans and tied up the game at 26-26 on a Jordan Bohannon three-pointer. Miles Bridges then put the Spartans up 29-26. Bohannon has 8 points, 4 assists, 4 rebounds for Iowa. 8.25 p.m. 1H1011 Iowa isn't going away. The Hawkeyes have pulled within 24-21 after a traditional three-point play by Tyler Cook. 8.13 p.m. 1H1426, Michigan State scored on its first five possessions and leads 16-9 through the first media timeout. The Spartans are shooting 7 of 12 from the field. Jared Jackson has six points and three rebounds for Michigan State. Iowa point guard Jordan Bohannon has 5 points. 8 p.m. An incredible rendition of the Star Spangled Banner tonight by Joe Everson, who sang and painted during the song. Here is his creation. 7.50 p.m. Iowa starters. Jordan Bohannon, Isaiah Miss, Nicholas Bear, Tyler Cook, Luca Garza. Michigan State starters. Cassius Winston, Jaron Jackson, Miles Bridges, Nick Ward, Joshua Langford. Russell Westbrook on Thunder. I believe in these guys more than anything in the world. If the Dunks didn't seem to punish the rim with the same ferocity. The post jam snarls and stank faces seemed less frequent. Or the high-stepping and double-barrel boom celebrations appeared subdued the first six weeks of the season, Russell Westbrook doesn't want anyone to get it twisted. True, the Oklahoma City Thunder have a different look and feel than previous seasons because of a first-ever Super Team soiree. And, the Thunder's franchise cornerstone spent the early parts of this union getting Paul George and Carmelo Anthony acclimated to playing with a stick of dynamite in sneakers. The situation prompted an adjustment from the league's reigning MVP, but Westbrook hadn't suddenly become a different player. I was always Russ. I was always Russ, Westbrook told Yahoo Sports. That's what people don't understand. Russ is always going to be Russ, but there are different variants. And the lit. Explosive one who has re-entered the MVP conversation over the past few months, the one who can put the team on his back and snuff stats while also letting George have some go-to-guy glory, is Theo. Nay the Thunder will need to reach their desired return to relevance. Oklahoma City has been one of the more confusing teams this season, repeatedly following encouraging stretches that turn doubters into believers with head-scratchers that do the opposite. Through the sometimes maddening starts and stops, Westbrook has never given up on the potential of this group. Always got confidence, Westbrook told Yahoo Sports. Never lose confidence in my teammates and myself. It's ups and downs during the season and I believe in these guys more than anything in the world. In his first and hopefully last season as a solo act, Westbrook binged on triple-doubles and raged against the mundane, scowling his way to personal acclaim and recognition that had previously eluded him. But the records and ridiculous stat lines were what he had to accept because little else was available with a team lacking the talent to actually contend. Westbrook wanted team success with a side of triple-doubles, not the other way around. 
so when general manager Sam Presti made the off-season moves for George and Anthony to reassure Westbrook that his faith in the organization was justified. The fiery franchise cornerstone felt personally responsible to make it work. I think at first it was hard for him. I mean, you've got a whole new team coming in, you're the point guard, you feel a tremendous responsibility to raise the group and make guys feel comfortable and get them acclimated. And when you do that, the last person you think about is yourself. Thunder coach Billy Donovan told Yahoo Sports. I think Russell, from day one, has tried to be extremely unselfish to try to get those guys comfortable, in terms of where they want the ball, how they like playing. I think his first inclination is, it's his job to get those other guys involved and get them playing, and I think that's what he tries to do all the time. Anthony hasn't been to the playoffs since 2013. And George and Westbrook both had short postseason runs last season. But if this experiment failed, the bulk of the blame would fall on the guy who flaunts his pectorals with tattered sweatshirts and asks. Why not? Westbrook would never express the pressures he felt but his play suggested otherwise. He missed a huge chunk of training camp because of a platelet-rich plasma procedure in his left knee and needed some time to regain his rhythm. Likewise, George and Anthony had to get in where they fit in an unusual assignment for players accustomed to having teammates assume those roles around them. You got somebody else on your side who is going to go to war with you, going to compete with you. Somebody who wants to win, just as bad as you. That makes this process fun, joyful and makes it exciting, Anthony told Yahoo Sports. Coming in, we all knew what we wanted to do. We all knew the goal. It was just, how are we going to go about that? I think now, we done found that rhythm, found that flow and everybody accepted that. Westbrook's passion and intensity are often misinterpreted because he isn't some angry, tunnel-visioned loner. He is demanding, but he's also harder on himself, which made the early stumbles frustrating. Not only did Westbrook have to contend with criticism for the Thunder's slow start, but he was also blamed for holding back former teammates like Victor Oladipo, DeMontis Sabonis and Yanis Cantor, who have all blossomed since leaving him behind. Donovan believes the whole exercise in Russ bashing and the claim that he couldn't play nice with others was misguided. He wants to win. He's a team first guy. Donovan told Yahoo Sports about Westbrook while acknowledging that new environments have worked out for the players used to get George and Anthony. I think Russell was trying to find ways to make the group better. George had moments when he looked lost or simply disappeared in the first few weeks of this arrangement. He has since had more flashbacks to his ball-dominant days in Indiana, most notably a recent 43-point effort in a loss to Denver. His pending free agency looms over the franchise, but George has pushed back on speculation about him leaving for Los Angeles next summer by espousing the benefits of playing with Westbrook. It's every play. It's every night. It's the same Russ. He's never tired. He's bringing that high energy every night, George told Yahoo Sports. When you put three guys together that have been a certain way throughout their careers, you've got to make those adjustments and you've got to figure out how to be yourself within the team. And I think that's what we've had to overcome. If George had the most difficult adjustment as an in his prime superstar, Anthony had the most dramatic one. Before the Thunder freed him from a dysfunctional relationship with the Knicks, Anthony was reluctant to play power forward or second or third fiddle. Questions about which version of Anthony would arrive in Oklahoma City have been answered. Instead of playoff mellow or hoodie mellow, the Thunder have extracted accommodating mellow, a player willing to sacrifice shots and standing for the good of the team. I think that makes you accept it a little bit easier, knowing that winning is what I want to do at this point in my career. Anthony told Yahoo Sports. It's not so much about ego or pride. It's about going out there and doing what I got to do. The Thunder have hit another rough patch of the season following a season-ending injury to Andre Roberson. 
Roberson's value on the defensive end outweighs his deficiencies as a shooter and his absence increases the likelihood that Presky continues his annual tradition of finding perimeter help at Thursday. A trade deadline Oklahoma City has made inquiries about Rodney Hood, a league source told Yahoo Sports. Any move the Thunder make would only serve as an ancillary piece in their journey. Westbrook remains the energy source, the force who will determine where this team goes. My job is to come out and make sure I make the game easy for them, regardless of what's going on with my personal self. Just make sure that the game is going well for the guys that we have on our team. Westbrook told Yahoo Sports. My game is not predicated on whether I miss or make shots. It's not defined by if I get a triple-double or if I score 30 points. I really don't care. All I care about is winning. If we win, I'm good. Can go for a slowdown Nebraska's high-scoring guard James Palmer Jr. Slowing Palmer, Nebraska junior guard James Palmer Jr. is probably the hottest player in the Big Ten right now. The 6'6 former Miami, Florida, transfer is averaging 25.2 points in his last six games, which includes back-to-back 28-point -back performances and wins against Wisconsin and Iowa. Palmer also had 34 points on 11 for 18 shooting in a loss against Ohio State on Jan. 22. Palmer isn't a lights-out shooter just 34.6%, 37 for 107, from three-point range. He does most of his damage slashing to the basket and finishing at the rim with his size and athleticism. The former top 100 recruit signed to play for the Hurricanes after finishing his high school career is the top prospect in Washington, D.C. In 2014, the Gophers held Palmer to 11 points on 3 for 10 shooting, including 1 for 5 from beyond the arc in their last meeting deck. 5 in Lincoln. That was his second lowest scoring game in Big Ten play, but Minnesota won't be able to use 6 to 8 sophomore Amir Coffey to defend Palmer. Coffey is expected to miss his third straight game with a right shoulder injury. Getting the assignment on Palmer will probably be 6 to 7 sophomore Michael Hurt. Jelly on Corp Michigan wasn't ready for this jelly. The Wolverines seemed unprepared to stop Gophers freshman guard Isaiah Washington from attacking off the dribble and scoring with a variety of mid-range pull-up jumpers and floaters. Washington season high 26 points in Saturday's 76-73 overtime loss in Ann Arbor included him making 9 of 10 shots to start the game. Only one of those attempts came from the three-point line. When Washington takes better shots, he's more efficient and tough to defend. He won Big Ten Freshman of the Week honors Monday, but what can we expect next from the New York Player of the Year? In the last meeting with Nebraska, Washington wasn't much of a factor with just 5 points on 2 for 7 shooting in 17 minutes. He's averaging 20 points and 5 assists in his last two games. Gophers coach Richard Pitino is giving his prize recruit more opportunity after Washington worked harder in practice. Washington should continue have a chance to make an impact in the backcourt the rest of the season. Assist Demi, the Gophers had only six assists on 28 field goals in 45 minutes Saturday at Michigan. That was tied for the fewest assists they had in a game all season, also in the Providence win on November. 13. There was an excessive amount of one-on-one -on -one basketball being played by Minnesota's guards, especially Washington and senior point guard Nate Mason. Sure, Mason and Washington had the hot hand combining for 48 points but they needed help from their teammates in the end. Moving the ball and getting more players involved in the offense gives Patino's team the best chance to win. Minnesota will be without two of its top scorers in coffee and suspended center Reggie Lynch again. But the Gophers have enough offensive firepower to compete, especially if leading scorer 17.5 and rebounder 11.7 Jordan Murphy gets the ball in the post or in spots to go to work. 
Murphy had 12 points and 6 rebounds on 4 for 8 shooting against Michigan. Role players Michael Hurt and Devondi Fitzgerald have shown in the past couple games they're not afraid to shoot the ball if left open as well. Game Info Time 8 p.m. CT Tuesday Where? Williams Arena Line Nebraska by 4 Series Minnesota leads 51-16 Last meeting Nebraska won 78-68 and Lincoln on deck 5 2017 TV BTN online live video BTN plus radio 100.3 FM and 1130 AM projected starters Minnesota 14 to 11 3 to 9 POS player HT year PPG G Nate Mason 6 to 2 senior 15.7 G. The Pre McBrayer 6 to 5 Jr. 10.0. F. Michael Hurt 6 to 7 So. 2.9. F. Devondi Fitzgerald 6 to 8 Jr. 3.7. F. Jordan Murphy 6 to 7 Jr. 17.5. Key reserves Isaiah Washington G. 6 to 1 Fr. 7.7 ppg. Jameer Harris G. 6 to 2 Fr. 3.7 ppg. Devonte Fitzgerald F. 6 to 8 Jr. 3.7 ppg. Coach Richard Patino 107 to 86 six season. Notable: The Gophers are shooting 40.4%. 218 for 539. Going 1 to 8 in games without suspended center Reggie Lynch. Including 33.3% from 3 point range. 61 for 183. And 44.1%. 157 for 356 on 2 point field goals. The pre McBrayer has scored just 13 points combined on 4 for 17 shooting from the field and 2 for 10 from the 3 point line in his last two games. McBrayer has been hampered by a lower left leg injury. Minnesota has attempted the most free throws, 574, of any Big Ten team this season and is shooting 70.6%. The Gophers celebrate their 90th year with Williams Arena as their home court Tuesday night. Nebraska, 17-8, 8-4. POS player HT. Year. PPG. G. Glenn Watson Jr. 6 to 0 junior 11.0 G James Palmer junior 6 to 6 junior 17.6 F Evan Taylor 6 to 5 senior 6.8 F Isaac Copeland 6 to 9 junior 13.2 F Isaiah Roby 6 to 8 so 7.3 Key reserves Anton Gill G 6 to 3 Senior 8.2 ppg Jordy Shimonga C 6 to 11 so 3.8 ppg Thomas Allen G 6 to 1 fr 3.7 ppg Jack McVeigh F 6 to 8 junior 2.1 ppg Dubio Geeky F 6 to 8 senior 0.7 ppg Tanner Burchard F 6 to 8 junior 1.0 ppg Coach Tim Miles 375 to 314, 23rd season. Notable: The Cornhuskers haven't won at Williams Arena since a 77 to 60 victory on deck. 29, 2003. They have been 0 to 4 since then, including an 88 to 73 loss at the barn last season. Nebraska's 8 to 4 conference record is the best league start since it was in the Big 12 in 1999. Junior guard Glenn Watson Jr. had a career high 29 points in news win against the Gophers on deck. 5. Fuller's prediction 19 to 6 picks record. Nebraska 75, Gophers 71. The Gophers have had losing streaks of five games or more in each of the last four seasons under Patino. Even when Minnesota reached the NCAA tournament and won 24 games last season it still dropped five in a row during Big Ten play. 
something about this team makes losing contagious when the season starts to slide a bit. An eight-game winning streak followed the losing stretch a year ago to save the U's NCAA tourney hopes. The Gophers would need to finish the regular season 6-0 to get to a respectable 9-9 in the Big Ten. That is obviously far-fetched considering Minnesota still has to play Michigan State and on the road against Indiana, Wisconsin and Purdue. Winning tonight isn't that out of the question. But like Patino says, his team would have to almost play a perfect game.